Okay, today we, this is the last section in the normal distribution chapter and we're going to be looking at hypothesis testing with the normal distribution. Now imagine that there's a company that makes pencils. Yeah, and let's make, say they make tens of thousands of pencils every day. And let's say that these pencils have a mean size of 15 centimeters and the variance is 0.1 centimeters okay so that's from all of the pencils but what the company wants to do they want to check that the mean size of the pencils is the same they don't want to make sure there's been no changes so let's say they take a sample throughout the day they take lots of samples let's say they take a sample of 20 pencils and uh, from that 20 pencils they find the mean and we'll use this for it x bar the mean length of those pencils yeah so out of the whole population of pencils their mean size should be 15 but we take a sample of 20 pencils and we find their mean length let's say they find the mean length the first sample that they take and they find the mean length is 14.9 centimeters okay let's say later on in the day put the bar at the top let's say later on in the day they take another sample or 20 pencils and they find the mean size to be 15.01 centimeters let's say later on during the day they take another sample and it's dead on 15 centimeters so you can see they can take lots of different samples through the course of the day and the mean size of those samples is going to change some are going to be slightly bigger than the mean some are going to be slightly smaller but what we would find if we took lots and lots of samples of 20 we would find that the mean size of these pencils is also normally distributed and the mean size of these samples would be the same mean as the mean size of all of the pencils but the spread the variance of these pencils would be the original variance divided by the sample size now in our case n the sample size was 20 yeah now I've got this little diagram here at the side here you can see what's going on with the population of all the things now if we had a look at the mean of these samples well if all my samples were three pencils a day um, or I did lots of different samples of three pencils um, there would be a greater variance in the size of the pencils because I'm only looking at three if I we're looking at five pencils in my samples lots of different samples of five pencils and looked at the mean size of the five well again there would be some variance but it'd be slightly smaller but as we increase the sample size and we look at the mean of those samples the bigger we make our sample the smaller the variance in those mean sizes so we're actually looking at the mean of samples the mean of samples and when we look at the mean of those samples regardless of what the sample size is it will be normally distributed and what we can do is we can do a hypothesis test we can take a sample of some items look at their mean size compare it to the original mean and say right has there been a change has the mean increased or decreased has it stayed the same yeah, so that's what this section is all about. You'll see some other distributions here and their sample means. And even when things are not normally distributed at the top here, their sample means are normally distributed or very close to a normal distribution. So let's have a look at some questions. Okay, so we're getting straight in, into a question here. The idea with doing these questions basically is that Here's our 
sample mean, which has the same mean as the original. Yeah, so this is the mean of all, of each of these samples that we're taking. Its spread is ver its variance is the original variance over n. And we want to see has the original mean changed? Has it moved? Now the way that we decide that is to see whether the new mean has moved into one of these tail areas. Has it increased or decreased enough that it ends up in this area? Now this area we will get from the significance level. So the significance level will tell you what area you're going to do there. Or we can work out if we know what the value is, we can actually use a work out a critical value here. And we can use that critical value um, to work out if the new mean is, is there or not. So from the area or the significance level, we can get a critical value that will tell us if the mean has moved into that area. Or we can take the, the mean of the sample that we've been given in the question and work out the area of that and decide whether that's bigger or smaller than the significance level. So let's get right into this question here. So um, it says that the mean is 60 normally, 60 millilitres, that's H0. And people are complaining that the, it's lower than that. So actually, is the mean less than 60 millilitres? So that's H0 and H1. OK, and what we want to do is we want to find out, has the mean changed? So I want to show you two different ways to answer this question. And you just choose one or the other. So uh, both of these here are sample means so I'm just doing it two different ways so you can do one or two so this way here 60 they both got 60 at the center I'm going to need to know what the standard deviation of this is um, because the variance the original variance divided by n gives you the variance of the sample mean that means that the standard deviation divided by root n gives you the standard deviation of these sample means. Okay, so if I want the standard deviation of this, of x bar, of these sample means, that's going to be um, the original standard deviation, which is 3 divided by the root of n, the sample size 16. So I get 3 quarters 0 0.75. So that's what I'm going to use on my calculator. Now, if I do it this way, what I'm going to do, because it's less than as h1, I want to see, has the mean decreased? OK, down here. Because it's 5% and it's a one-tail test, that area is 5%, not 2.5%. And I'm going to use inverse normal to work out what this value is here. OK, so if I do that, I will get. So inverse normal area of 5%. Standard deviation 0.75. And a mean of 60. And that tells me that this value here is 58.77, 58.77, okay. Now, what conclusion can I make? Well, if that's, basically this is saying, if the mean drops um, to 58.77 or below, I can say that the mean has decreased. 
Now where was the where was the mean of this sample? Oh, 59.1. Right, 59.1 is over here. Yeah, it hasn't dropped into that area. So the mean hasn't changed. Yeah, so we would accept H0 based on the fact that the um, mean hasn't dropped down to this critical value. So that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is to take the value of 59.1 and use normal CD on your calculator and work out this area and see if it's more or less than 5%. So if we work out that area and we just use normal CD, we just stick zero as a lower value. Let's do 59.1 as the upper value, uh, 0.75 for the uh, standard deviation, 60 for the mean. And that tells us that this area here is 11.5%. Now, what does that mean? Well, it's greater than the significance level. It means it's not in that danger area, that 5%. Area so again we can say the mean hasn't changed because 11.5% is greater than 5%. Okay, so basically we're testing H0. H0 is likely, so we might come to the same conclusion that we accept H0. And then you'd finish off by saying um, there is not enough evidence uh, to um, accept H1 or. Not enough evidence to reject H0, therefore the um, complaints are unfounded. The amount of orange juice in the cartons has not decreased, it's still 60. Okay, let's have a look at another question. So this question here isn't about an increase or a decrease. It talks about has the mean changed from that value? And uh, so that means Eight zero means that the mean hasn't changed. 0 0.580 H1 will be that the mean has changed, not increase or decrease. It means it's changed from 0 0.580. This means it's a two-tail test, which means we split the 1% and have a half a percent either side. So here's my sample means which are normally distributed the mean of these sample means is going to be 0 0.580 and this time it's asking for the critical value so basically if i have one percent split and have half a percent here and half a percent here what are the critical values now basically the critical values are going to tell us how far the mean can change before we say right it's changed so much that we have we've got evidence to reject h0 the mean has significantly changed so we're going to work out these critical values at either end which means we have to use inverse normal yeah because we've got the area we want to find what the critical values are. So if we go to inverse normal, so for this bottom end, we're going to uh, put in an area of half a percent, not uh, 0 0.005, not 0 0.05, that would be 5%, but 0 0.005, half a percent. We need to also put in the variance of this, now the mean is just going to be uh, 0 0.580, that's what goes in our calculator. The standard deviation of this is going to be the original standard deviation, 0.015 divided by the sample of 50 or root 50. Now you can just type that in on your calculator where it says standard deviation. So I'm just gonna type in 0.015 divided by square root 50 and it will work it out and put the answer in the box or the right place for me 2.1 times 10 to the power negative 3 and a mean of 0.580 so if I work that out 
what I get down here is a critical value of 0 0.5745. Okay, so what this is telling us is if the mean drops below this value, it's changed significantly, and I would say that the mean has changed. Yeah, and I would accept H1. So we're going to find this upper value here. The only difference is um, if I press AC and go back and change the area now to 97.5%, and and so 0.975 for nine, sorry, 0.995, If I put that in, other values change the same. It's telling me here this value is 0.5855 rounded to four decimal places. Yeah, so that's like the upper limit we have for the change in the mean. So we have our critical region. So we could write down critical region is where our sample mean is uh, less than 0.5745 or where our sample mean is greater than, now you could use greater than or equal to 0.5855. So if the mean changes to those values in a critical region, then um, we can make our decision about accepting or rejecting H0. So part B says the mean diameter of the sample 50 bolts is calculated to be 0 0.587. Comment on this observation. So let's have a look. Does 0 0.587 fall in one of these critical regions? Yes, it does. 0 0.587 would be over here somewhere. There we go, it's in that tail. That means that the mean's changed enough or increased enough um, to say that yes, it has changed. So um, since, so we don't need to do any further calculation. We just use our critical region. Since 0 0.587 is in the upper critical region, there is evidence to suggest the um, mean size of bolts has increased. Yeah because it's moved into this tail area. In fact, there's evidence to suggest that the mean size of the bolts has actually, yeah, it has, has increased. Actually, the question says is it changed. So yeah, it's it, there's evidence to suggest it's changed and actually it's increased. It doesn't ask us about increasing in this question, but yes, there's enough evidence to say that it's, that it's changed. Okay, now in the book, they do um, do this question by let's just highlight that by using z values you don't need to do that i would suggest the only two time you use z values is when you need to find the mean or the variance otherwise you can just do it straight in your calculator you do not need to standardize your values you can if you want to but there is no need only when you need to find the mean or the standard deviation variance right you should be in a position now where you can do exercise 3D on pages 58 to 60.